Has there any has there ever been someone who comes into your garage and they go, Nope. Nope, I'm leaving. Not doing no, it. No, but I've had a couple guests where I saw it in their eyes. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, why did I do this? <laughs> Dude, for sure. <laughs> Only one since it's been in the garage. Pretty much anybody who does a lot of podcasting knows that things kind of look better on camera than they do like in in it all yeah, is it's all fake it's hollywood it's all fake it's hollywood yeah so we're in a garage right now right mm -hmm. but on this half of the garage it's very much like a studio on the front half of the garage i've got some bins of my costumes and stuff like you <laughs> like you commented on before we started the podcast uh there was only one guest who i had that like I could see the fear in their eyes. Like this is what I did in my living room back in the day. And see, it, to me, that would be less scary. No, it was, yeah. <laughs> this guest walked in, they're like, all right, let's get to it. <laughs> they, they, were like, they like did not want. Man or woman? It was a man. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Black or white? White dude. Yeah, that's the best kind of dudes. <laughs> that's what I heard. <laughs> Is that what you heard? <laughs> I heard that. I don't think that, but I heard that somewhere. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, just different opinions. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I, uh, let's edit that, edit that out or not. Leave it in. But just know that I kind of thought about editing it out. So it's okay. So the fact that Ari thought about us editing it out, you know, he's a good guy. Yeah. I'm so good guy. we'll leave that in. Yeah. Leave it in. But you guys know. But you guys know as it. the audience that we thought about from an editorial stance, like, should we edit that out? <laughs> but like, then we were like, no, people will understand he has good will. He has good intention. Exactly. Yeah. You're part of the chosen people. Jews? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those, not as good as whites. Right. They're at the bottom. Let's, I mean, apparently, lately, that, that's the trend. <laughs> that's what Kanye says, and Kanye is the goat. <laughs> you know, Kanye has been saying a lot of stuff lately, and um, you know, it's uh, it's interesting to watch a guy go from literally at the top of the mountain to the bottom of the mountain to doing Tim Pool and Alex Jones' show, which I would do too. They're awesome, but I didn't think Kanye would. Would you have Kanye on your podcast today? Oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. Are we allowed to curse here? Yeah. Yes. Hey man, you be, we go willy nilly on this podcast. It's funny. Everyone asks that on every podcast. Are we allowed to curse? But every podcast is like, yeah, it's a podcast. You can do whatever you want. Yeah. 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 That's like the, the fun of not being on a morning show. I asked it because I know you're a dad. You're a nice guy. And, and you, you don't know really curse. that I screen all these episodes for my child as soon as <laughs> one day your kid's going to watch this. Oh, He's going to out of your control. You're going to tell him not to. You're going to be like, hey, don't watch the Ari episode. And then he's going to say, okay, dad, I won't. And then you're going to leave the house one day and you're going to think he's out there looking up naughty videos. And he is the Ari episode. Yeah. Yeah. There's definitely videos that he's going to come across that I'm just be like, just <laughs> don't I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later, dude. <laughs> like, like your dad was doing weird experimental stuff. Mm -hmm. Just don't do this yourself. What does your dad do? Uh, he, dude, I mean, most, a lot. most of the scissor bros stuff is so like, I, I wouldn't really want my son seeing <laughs> a lot of those challenges and stuff like that. Yeah. Good point. You're, they they you're go wild. pretty wild. You're a wild man. Hey man. Would you say you're a top 10 most wild comics in the game? I don't think anybody would say that about me. No? No. I'd say you are. Would you? Uh, at least like on camera. Off camera, I'd say you're not. I Okay, I agree. Okay. I, I could. I see what you're saying. Um, I would say as far as like f willingness f to f do something for the bit, I think I'm towards the top of... Oh, commitment level? Yeah, yeah, top yeah. Top three. Right, right, right. As far as that goes. If, if it's a funny bit... Mm -hmm. It's very hard for me as a comedian to turn it down. If if I know that it's going to get big laughs, it's very difficult <laughs> for me. I miss the day. I don't know if you still do this. I'm sure you've talked about a hundred times, but the days where you would like dive into chairs and oh. really just like hurt yourself. Yeah, it was yeah. like an empty OR. Are there? Do you even go up on empty ORs anymore? 
Uh, do you get late night spots for not MPR? Not really like that anymore. Yeah. It's just a, it's different also because after the pandemic, they don't let the show go as late. Mm -hmm. So right. even if I did a late, like even if I am on like the later side, like it's, it's still, still not two or three spots before when I used to be going up. Right. So even now, like when some people complain about going up late night, I'm like, do you remember before the pandemic? <laughs> this is like way better than <laughs> we used to go up for a four hour audience. The audience had been there for four hours and there was four of them left. Yeah. 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 No, so it's I good. no, But yeah, I used to do that uh yeah i used to tackle chairs and <laughs> tackle the stool and stuff like that depending if it, it, if it has to do with a bit or something i'll i'll do that now but i used to just like do it i used with to no just, explanation no explanation i'd be like ah, ah! <laughs> <laughs> i'd dive into stool or chairs for, for for no one too you did it for no one you oh, did it for dude, three people for three the people guys. and a couple comics dying laughing in the yeah. back yeah and then i'd wake up the next day i'd be like oh God. I have like bruises all over my body and I'm like that killed for five people yeah dude wild man top 10 thanks dude top 10 wild man yeah mm -hmm. I thank you man I'd say you're more wild than Steve-O now currently in 2022 I and I like Steve-O I'm not hating on Steve-O I'm a Steve-O fan but I'd say I'd put you over wild factor I disagree with you he's still doing some pretty gnarly stuff yeah he's more gnarly but Good you morning. mean on stage? Yes, that's exact. I mean on camera, or yeah, I guess stage. Yeah, because those are two different things. Yeah. I take it back. I'm wrong. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. Dude, edit that out. Don't edit it out. But just know I wanted to edit. Dude, how could Wait, you think I'm less gnarly than Jeremiah? <laughs> Come on, man. That's good. I know it is. <laughs> Damn, you've been working on that. Have, yeah, did it's you, in my back pocket. Have you used that before? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> has he heard that too, too many times yeah <laughs> he, he kind of feels this way or that way about it <laughs> i don't know if he likes like hearing impressions to his face <laughs> i don't know i honestly i don't know if, if he does i genuinely am thinking if i heard that without looking if i would thought i think i would think it was steve -O. okay you know what was, was a great good. Uh, yeah. what was a great test mm -hmm. we called uh you know how uh steve Johnny randolph's Knoxville. brother <laughs> yeah, we, <laughs> oh, called called Scott. Scott. we called scott you randolph called, which a lot of people say is johnny knoxville's counterpart right yeah. so scott randolph is the co-host of steve-o's wild ride and and Steven Randolph was like, dude, I think we can, I think your Steve is good enough where we would, uh, like, you know, <laughs> like yeah, we, we could mess with him. And we had him for the first, like, I want to say 15 to 30 seconds. Cause we called him from Steve's phone mm -hmm. and I was like, Hey dude, it's Steve. <laughs> I lost my phone, dude. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like we like did the whole thing and he was like, it, what, but I just I just talked to you like five minutes ago. <laughs> like so you bought it for a little bit and then he's like, There's no possible way. I literally like I'm about to see you in five minutes. Like like ha but had the timing been we just got unlucky on the timing, yeah. but like other than that, we maybe could have got it going for a little bit longer. I was like, Hey, I need you to go pick up some shit for me and go to Mesa. <laughs> <laughs> just like super specific. Uh, you're wild. See, you see that? Wild, wild. <laughs> yeah, dude. I've known you a freaking long time now. I f I don't remember meeting you, but yeah, I've known you I forever. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, actually, I take it back. I remember meeting you. I just remember. Where, where was it? It was just like a potluck night at the. You were coming in to do friends and family because mm -hmm. I think I moved here like right when you got past to friends and family. Oh, okay. And so that would have been, uh, you moved here around 2012 then? Yeah, 2012. Yep. yep. And I would sign up for Potluck Sunday and Monday. Mm -hmm. and Back when it used to be two days. It used to be two days. Mm -hmm. And we just like met in passing through a mutual friend or something. Like, hey, Jeremiah, Ari. And it was like, nice to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. It was like that. On the, so Patio Comedy Store. Patio Comedy Store. There it is. Where yeah. all the great meetings happen. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. And you used to do this thing uh, that... Uh, was it was pretty cool the uh the stand up talk website yeah i stopped doing it but I could still come back i still own the domain i mean when i feel like when it was going people got a lot out out of it for like what you did with it and stuff like that like you put out you helped put out like jamar neighbor's album which is pretty mm -hmm. dope 
Yeah, no, it was some cool stuff. I think if I had actually kept with it, it'd probably be... It was, you said, people say that with everything. If I had started a podcast 10 years ago, if I had done that... But no, I think if I had actually kept posting... It was basically a stand-up blog. Yeah. Kind of like the Comedy Bureau, but not is like open mic focused and right. more just like articles and interviews and stuff with comedians. Sure. But yeah, it was like a, it was like to nerd out on stand-up comedy was what it was. Because I was a big nerd. I read Engadget, which is about technology and Gizmodo and those kind of websites, Ars Technica. Mm-hmm. So I read a lot of those about tech. And I was like, oh, there's nothing that's just, there's comedy ones, but there was, which I don't even know if there are anymore, but there were a few comedy ones, but there was no stand-up one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, I'm going to do this. And Brad Sachs, uh, rest in peace. No, he's with his family, He, but he quit comedy. But uh, Brad Sachs and I uh, were just <laughs> like writing the, That's articles. the new R.I.P. For, for, for Sam. It was like, yeah, R.I.P. He's like, oh, he passed away. He's like. He just doesn't do comedy anymore. Yeah, he's dead to us. No, no. Uh, no great guy. Uh, he would come up with these just like catchy title. Like dumb. now I'm looking back and I'm like, I would read that right now and hate this article. But it'd be like top five angriest comedians in L.A. Top five wild comedians. Like like titles like that. Right. And then we would pick comedians and get them to retweet it. They were all complimentary. Like top five comedians who crush. Top five crowd work comedians. Like things like that. And we just list out comics and then tweet at them and tag them and they would repost it. Yeah. Mostly posting at how weird it was. They're like, what is this? <laughs> but it would get traffic. It sure. would get traffic to the site. Of course. So yeah, I did that. And then I you know what I think I used to have a lot more free time. Yeah, you're and then freaking I got, bu- you're a freaking busy guy, man. Yeah, I'm a busy guy. And then and then, you know, I started getting booked on a few shows and I was like, I don't need stand up talk no more. Right. That's it. I'm bored. Got tired of it. Can you tell me about? You did some videos about this online, but I want to. I want to get behind this because I love a good prank. And you did something with your parents that I couldn't really tell <laughs> where the line was of reality and where the bit be finished and began, basically. And it was something to do with your parents' cars. Yeah. So I did a video where um i give away my parents cars i say i I, i'm gonna be generous here like i made out to be like i'm this generous guy right 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 giving away my parents and i'm gonna on behalf of my parents be generous and then in turn they're gonna be generous because it's their cars and then so i gave car all their each car away to a different stranger and then at the end my mom comes home and she goes where are the cars because my parents are uh rich Okay. So they have they have probably five I mean five yeah, five cars, I'd say between the two of them. Which that's, is like that's good. Yeah, it's a good amount of car. I, I mean, mean you don't need to be rich to have five cars, but they have five nice cars. Five nice cars and then also some couples just the one nice car each is good. And then mm-hmm. if there's a bonus car, like, oh you're doing pretty good. If you got five between the two of you, that's pretty solid. Yeah, they got an SUV, they each got some fancy convertible and yeah they got random cars so yeah so i gave them away and then my mom comes and it's like where's the cars and i told her and she freaked out and was like you can't do this i'm calling the cops and like just that was just a funny little video one of those one of those vids where you pull a little prank but yeah no the truth behind it watch the video pause go watch that video come back now three i don't want to do any spoilers three Two, one. The truth behind that video was all fake. Yeah. It was all 100% fake. Uh, I had, I just had, I think I was watching a lot of like TikTok pranks in that yeah, time. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I was like, I got a prank but idea. You, but you got your, the real reaction of your mom on That's camera. what everyone, so a lot of people reached out to me when I released that and they go, hey, that's fake, but like good job pranking your mom. <laughs> she just, she was a great actress. Right. It was fake. She yeah. knew the whole time. Oh, she did? Yeah. It was all fake. Wow. She was, she, I was really impressed. I was like, I was, we'll I'm see. impressed too because I saw the video and I was like, she flipped out. She flipped out. She she was pro. And that was, uh, we did two takes. Both takes were really good. That was the second take. So it did get better the second time, but both takes were superb. Wow. Yeah. She was, she was pro. She's a lawyer uh, and um, knows how to lie. Jewish. A lot of, there's a lot of Jewish folks in entertainment. Mm-hmm. She grew up in LA mm-hmm. and yeah, and she lies a lot. So she was good. She was natural. 
<laughs> she was pro. Yeah, I was. I was like, as it was happening, I was like impressed. As it was, I was like, I, shit, I have to be good now because right. she, she was good. I gotta elevate my game. because yeah. my mom was giving me a run for my <laughs> money. I, a lot of people watch that. They're like, if I ever need a mom, I'm casting your mom. I'm like, Dude. she'll do it. She'll drive up. Dude, how funny would it be if your mom started getting cast in like huge movies? <laughs> Wouldn't surprise me. <laughs> so reach. Hey Ari, uh, I'm right. I got this new movie. I'm like, oh, that's awesome, man. So I was wondering, uh, can I get your mom's number? <laughs> To be, I mean, you'd be like, yeah, that, yeah. Do you do you need any, any like you know younger guys? We'll let you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We uh, I think we're pretty covered on that. Yeah. But uh, your mom, I mean, wow, she's just breathtaking. <laughs> she's great. The work's amazing. Okay. Uh, yeah, for sure. What it, what I've always liked about you in the scene, not that you're just, that you're funny and nice. You know, those are for me that those are like as far as like people who I want to work with and hang out with and be friends with funny and nice is at the top of that pyramid. Sure. You but, gotta be funny and nice. Right. But below that, I always respect people who are hard workers as well. And you've always hustled and like been really good about like just figuring out different pro uh, projects and just different, different stuff that like works for you. And, um, I've also just really been enjoying your stand up lately. Thank you. Yeah. That's really, really nice of you. You're a uh, role model. I've always, since I moved to LA, I'd be like, I'm going to be like Jeremiah one day. So it means a lot. I say that and it sounds sarcastic, but I do. No, thank you. That being said, it's funny how I do come across as a hardworking guy. And I think that's because I am Jewish and I put out content more than most people. And I think I am hardworking compared to most comedians, but really I'm not even that hardworking. Like I don't work eight hour days, most of the, 90% of the time. Most days I wake up at 11, I do a couple of things and I call it, I'm not that hardworking, but most comedians are so lazy. Yeah. You don't need to do that much to you be looked at as hardworking. You don't need to do that much more than the average comic to really propel yourself ahead of. Yeah. Dude, I know a lot of comics who they wake up and then they go to the show. And I'm like, did you write? They're like, mm. No. I'm yeah, like, that's all they do. I'm like, what do you mean? You just woke up and you... <laughs> it's crazy yeah. to me. Yeah, there's com there's comics who crush, but they're doing the same 10 minutes they were doing when I moved here 10 years ago, and who knows how long they were doing yeah. before that. And I have old jokes. I get it. It's hard to write, but there's some that literally haven't done anything else, and they're still more successful than me. So I get it. What's It's hard to motivate yourself. When, you ha when you're comfortable, you're making money and you're you're making the payments on everything in your life it's hard to be like well why why should i write a new joke right. what's it gonna do for me yeah i forget but i get bored who said it but some comic or somebody said like comfortability is is like the destroyer of creativity or something like that yeah it is and even for me like again i think i work harder than most comics and i try to put out com uh you know comedy and content try to get to the next level of comedy. <laughs> whoa, whoa, so, whoa, Ari, what was that? What was this? <laughs> it just sounds so lame saying, <laughs> trying to get to the next level of comedy. Ari's trying to get to the next level. <laughs> How much is this? Is this a thousand dollars? I wouldn't say that. How much was this? I wouldn't say that. Check, check, check. Oh my God. Is most of the podcast just the guest playing with this toy? Sometimes. <laughs> Listen, man, I go in the direction of where the guest leads us you know what i mean effeminate oh my god this is homophobic <laughs> <laughs> i love it i love the realization of this effect is awesome and homophobic i just want to suck your dick what <laughs> okay is it really changing your i just want to be a gay <laughs> <laughs> Ari, yeah. it seems like uh, the effects are actually uh, changing your point of view. It's actually shifting rather than it usually just changes the voice. It seems like it's also changing your sexuality as well. Hold on. I need to break up with my girlfriend. Okay. Um, wow. The, yeah, the, the effects are, there's cause and effects uh, with that over there. 
So just be careful, okay? I this will be the whole podcast. I need to I need to stop now. I need to stop for a while. Well, you're a gadget guy, so of course you you. Would you say I got to leave with something from the studio? I'm taking this. That's something that you are pitching to me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm taking it. This is mine now. Before we started recording, he goes, you know, you got a lot of stuff in this garage. Um, uh, what if you to get start getting rid of stuff? Uh, you start letting a guest take something. I'm like, and I said, that's actually a, a very clever thing, but pretty much in this, everything in this garage, I do need for different things. Mm, it's mine now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It's mine. Okay. That's convincing. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh, I don't remember what we we're talking about, but that's cool. Oh, just random stuff. Yeah. Comedy, comedy bullshit. Yeah. I don't work hard. A lot of people think I work hard. Mm. I don't, I'm pretty lazy, but I'd like one day I'm going to start working hard. And then, then, oh, this world's in for a treat. The floodgates mm-hmm. are open. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get a six pack abs. I'm gonna. Freaking... Do you have a desire as a, as a comic to get to get a six pack ever? I do. Do you? But not as a comic, just as a person. I want to be. <laughs> just so if I had a six pack, dude. First off, you know me, right? I love the ladies. Well, Before, earlier a second ago, I love the men, but now that that effect is off, I'm back. Can we talk about your love of the ladies? Sure. Yeah. Is it? Is it time? No, no, no. Uh, we'll get to that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to we'll get to sax talk at the end. But you're one of those dudes who historically, I've seen you get with a lot of women. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> not a lot no i think it's a lot for comics again it's, it's one of the again uh, it's it's a lot for comedians it's a lot for comedians and, for and it's a lot for me jeremiah Watkins. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot for a guy who's been with the same girl his whole life so like i've seen r with a couple different girls over the years or dating different women i'm just mm-hmm. like dude what <laughs> this is insane is part of you now does your wife listen to this yeah uh at this point probably not anymore okay She'll catch episodes here and there. So it's part of you when you see a guy like me, like a guy, you know, not that good looking. Like, yeah, I'm cute, but not like, you know, I'm achie- anyone could look at me and could achieve what I could achieve, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so part of you when you see you me. You keep lowering the bar for yourself. <laughs> I'm talking a lot of shit. I'm very self-deprecate. Listen, uh, you know when you have a piece of gum on your shoe and you walk into a barber shop? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's me. That's me. That's me. That's a great description. <laughs> Never heard that before. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> so, when you see me with a couple of hot ladies, <laughs> do you think to yourself, damn, that could be me? No, I don't really look at it like that. But, like, you know, I think that, you know, the human side of me is like, you think of your alternate timelines. Yeah, if that's a reality, you think this that could be me? If there's a Jeremiah out there that that decided to go a completely different path, tried to go single, I would love to be. I would love to go into like you know the Spider Verse, like the multiverse and stuff like that. It would be fun to visit the other Jeremiahs <laughs> that for would a be day. Fun. Yeah. Wouldn't that be cool? That'd be, that'd be sick. Isn't that a good wish? Like if it's you were one. given wishes. Now, do you actually believe in multiverses? Do you think there is another Jeremiah out there? That's hard for me to believe. Yeah, I don't really, I don't. I don't, it. but I've been, I've been like reading like uh, a book recently. Uh, about, have you heard of? Um, I'm just impressed you read a book recently. Uh, I'm So let's dude, stop there. Good job. Honestly, well. It's hard I'm, to read these days. I'm like a quarter done with it, but I'm, I have not read a book in so long it's that really I'm hard. like, it's really, it's really hard for me to focus and just, mm-hmm. but anyway, I'm reading this book about out of body experiences and people who believe that there the spirit is different is different from the vessel of your physical self and there is a lot of like interesting stuff in there about people who like believe in reincarnation so they're like yeah i look like a fat guy but really and i'm chiseled my soul is chiseled <laughs> my soul identifies as chiseled <laughs> yeah 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 you don't know the real me this, this is the real, the real me. Me. this is this vessel ugh. no i've had way better <laughs> i'm actually a hot babe with busty tits right right yeah <laughs> do you think any babe 
refers to themselves. <laughs> I'm a hot babe with busty tits. Do you think that that sentence has been uttered by a woman in, in, in life, actually? No. No, like, I don't. Don't you think that, like, a babe with busty tits is definitely a guy thing? <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't think a woman has ever said that. Yeah, that's how I would know. Like, that's how I know your soul isn't a babe with busty tits. Because <laughs> right. a babe with busty tits would never say it's that. It's just a horny dude. <laughs> yeah. They got trapped inside a hot girl. And now all these other mm. horny dudes are trying to get with them that's the reincarnation then the karma that they have to live with you know where that is going to happen mm. not the multiverse but the metaverse yes that's where we're going to have percent. busty titted women with uh, this voice machine right here yes and you're going to go in there and you're like man i met this hot chick on the metaverse today when really you're just talking to me <laughs> <laughs> With a piece of machine. gum at the bottom of a shoe <laughs> at a barber shop. That's, That's all you're talking to. So welcome to your future. It's me. I'm going to be getting a lot of dudes. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Right. <laughs> yeah, dude. That's um, the metaverse is a very weird thing where uh, I do think we are kind of headed in a direction of that ready player one future. For sure. Where everybody's obsessed and consumed about when they can get off work to get into the metaverse and that's going to be like their escape it's like kind of kind of weird because i've done some vr uh and i don't like the effects of when i come out of vr i feel really like i don't get sick but it's hard to explain that goes away so do you see red band show on youtube so red band live streams probably like five days a week at from like 11 p.m till two in the morning the virtual red band yeah virtual red band where he goes in this vr it's kind of like the beta version of what it's going to be mm-hmm. right now it's avatars but soon it's gonna you know you're gonna be able to be a hot chick or do like red man his character is a uh, wendy's wendy from wendy's mm-hmm. the mascot with big busty tits and then it's red man talking while he's shit face drunk every night but <laughs> but the v2 of that is gonna be it's gonna get more realistic more realistic but yeah the first few times you go into vr it's uh it's yeah it's like discombobulating and you you feel weird and you get you kind of get nauseous a little bit i felt like yeah. when i took it off that i was tripping like the real world was tripping does that make sense yeah because when i went when i drove i was actually at red band's place when he was still living here in burbank i did vr for the first time like for an extended period of time it was like 20 or 30 minutes mm-hmm. and when i took it off i felt all weird and kind of loopy and when i drove home I felt like I was in a video game and it freaked me out because <laughs> yeah. it, th- that's that's real life, but it felt like, you know what I mean? Just like yeah. the way I was moving and stuff was not true. me. Con- yeah. It was very bizarre. I don't know how to explain it. Yeah, I know what you're saying. I think that'll go, you'll get more used to it mm-hmm. as you do it more, but at the same time, VR is going to get so much more realistic. And then, yeah, what if you kind of like are used to the, think you might be in VR for a second and then you crash your car. It could happen. Well, yeah, you start feeling like you're kind of more invincible in that world. Like, there's literally like the the those games where you can walk the plank and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and you can jump off buildings and fly right. and stuff like that. Yeah. What's to start messing with people's heads like who are doing VR every day that that mm-hmm. stop differentiating reality versus especially VR. if they're on like a drug or they're mentally ill for some reason for they were yeah. born that way and then combine those things. Ooh, mentally ill and drugs probably is not going to mix with the vr world real not, well not that well yeah but you know it'll it'll uh weed out the week solid way to look at it yeah you got to think glass half full the people that die from that hey you weren't ready and you know that's what i've always liked about you is half glass full kind of guy <laughs> yeah yeah mm-hmm, you gotta you gotta what's the point what's the point in being negative all the time True. I mean, dude, you're preaching to the choir at this point. Yeah. And I'm negative a lot, but I try to catch myself and go, you know what? I'm glad those people are dead. (laughs) (laughs) What's the most negative you've been in the last year about something? Uh, eh, I don't know. I don't have like a specific moment, but sometimes you just wake up feeling bad for yourself. Sometimes you wake up and you go... Mm. Why didn't I get this? Why isn't this girl want me? Why, whatever it is, why do I, why am I sick? Why me? But Mm -hmm. then you got to snap out of it, do some push-ups, drink a glass of water, clean yourself off in a bath, and you're back, baby. (laughs) 
you lost me a bath. <laughs> Are you a bath guy? Oh, here's here's the stuff. If you're having a bad day, and you could use this too, but it's for the audience. It's not for you, but you could use it because you don't have bad days. You're you're one of those guys. But uh, your bad day is like most people's okay days. Perspective, but yeah, yeah. yeah. So. If you're having a bad day, if you suffer from real depression, like a real depression, here's what you do. You buy a pair of white sneakers that you keep in your closet for this bad day. You don't wear them. They're literally never worn until you have the day where you need them. You put on your fresh white, all white sneakers, the kind where you see people and you go, why, why do they have those? It's because they're, they're having a bad day and they've heard this. You wear, you wear the white sneakers, you have a glass of water, you do some push-ups, and you take a bath. It'll make it at least 20% better. At least. It's one of those so crazy it might just work. I mean, if you put it out there, why not? I promise you'll feel better. There is something, there is something, even if you're not a vain person at all, about putting on shoes that are brand new, that look very nice. Mm -hmm. You're just like, oh, okay feel kind of good in these and it's something about the all whiteness it makes you feel rich because it's so dumb to wear all white shoes because mm. you can only wear them two times before they get before they're up. a little dirty yeah but you the first couple times you wear them you go man people are gonna think i'm rich and you just feel like this guy that people don't even know about <laughs> it's it's a theory it Dude, works for me it works for me this and is, i think it would work for everyone this I is do. some good tony robbins <laughs> advice here yeah but you can't abuse it if you start wearing white sneakers all the time, they're not going to mean anything to you. Mm. You can't just start wearing white sneakers. and It's like drugs. It's like you do heroin. It feels great, but you can't start doing it every day. Do you still do your show on licensed therapy at all? Yeah. It's not as consistent as I'd like, but yeah, I do it. You're good at that. Thank you. You're good at giving unlicensed therapy. I want to mix it. So right now, unlicensed therapy is mostly a normal podcast where we just talk mm -hmm. with a little splash of, so what's going on, you know, with that. Right. But I'm going to switch up the format because I, I think you might've seen this on my Instagram. I've been posting clips every day on my podcast. Mm -hmm. I've lost 200 followers. People don't want it. And, and they're good clips. There's, they're as good clips as anyone. But from my experience, people are done with, with the podcast clips. Unless it's like this banger clip where you're like preaching something inspirational or it's so off the wall funny they're like sharing it with their friends if it's even just like kind of funny or pretty good it's hurting me yeah so that's the, interesting you gotta we gotta make it different yours yours is different you add a lot of special effects you got the voice changer i need to make mine more different so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna get like a therapy couch and a chair and make someone actually lay down yeah we're we're gonna lay down with headsets and we lay down and really turn it into a therapy session oh okay and really lean into that's the, a, the that's gimmicks a, that's a good call yeah and speaking of that gimmicks let's get into this next segment <laughs> let's do it wig wig it's really nice to um go on the state with you thank you it's really Thanks nice thanks um, I think that, that it's, uh, a really convenient sizzler here in Burbank. I love sizzler. Yeah, I bet you do, huh? It's just, it's such a good deal, and I'm always so full and stuffed after it. What do you mean by full and stuffed? Just, I eat so much of their fried cabbage, and it just stuffs me up. Fried cabbage? Yeah. Fried cabbage. Okay, well, I'm just trying to get to know you a little bit better. Do you... Are you a meat eater? Are you vegetarian? Oh, I need that meat. I need meat. Where do you keep looking? <laughs> <laughs> You're so funny. <laughs> with the looking. With... I'm you so funny like, with the looking? Just you're so silly. I, uh, man, yeah, I love me, man. Oh, okay. Well, Brenda, um, I'm really, really happy that you decided to swipe in my direction. Yeah, I actually gave my phone to my daughter and she swiped yes on you. And I was like, no, 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 not him, but I'm glad she did. Because you're a nice man. Oh, that's very sweet. How old's your daughter? 14. 
Okay, glad you're here. She's a teenager, but let's just focus on me and don't be creepy. So you let your daughter swipe for men as a 14-year-old? Yeah, it's a bonding exercise, and, you know, she has to like the men I'm with as well. So if she doesn't like you, then we can't be together. Oh, okay. And she saw maybe a stepfatherly quality about me? I suppose. Okay. Where where are you taking this stepfather business here? Well, I was just saying, like, maybe if things go right, then... You know, me and you could maybe be together. I might have a stepdaughter. This is the first date we've been on, and you're talking about stepdaughter and filling me up with fried cabbage? I didn't say anything about trying to fill you up with cabbage. It's just... You're moving fast, and I love it. Really? Yeah. Are you... Let's get out of here. Okay, I want to... I'll tell you everything I want to do to you, all right? Okay, okay. Okay? I want to paint your nails and call my ex and tell her I'm happy. I like that. You don't have a gag reflex, do you? I don't know. Let's find out. This This turned into an erotic... Improv session. <laughs> it's just this voice just makes me so freaking. I just said that naughty. I wanted to paint your nails and call call my ex and tell her I'm happy and and then uh, you started looking at me in a certain way and then I asked you if you had a gag reflex. I think we need to slow it down here and okay. just right go back to eating our sizzler. What are you gonna get? What are you gonna order? Uh, I think I'm gonna get the. Uh, the champion. What's that? What's You've never the had the champion no. meal? Mm-mm. Oh, it's their porterhouse steak. Twice baked potato. Bacon bits. And can you eat garlic aioli? All that? Can you stuff your body with that? What's up with you and stuffing? <laughs> Do you like getting stuffed? I just. Something about being all stuffed up and filled to my brim really just makes me so happy and cheerful. Do you like stuffed crust? Oh, Pizza Hut? Mm -hmm. You're the one. Do you like stuffed butt? Butt stuff? Do you like butt stuff? Stuffed butt. Butt stuff. Uh, That's some... I'm... (laughs) I'm not, I'm not really comfortable. Do you think we should get a check and get out of here? Let's get the check and get out of here. I just, I'm uh, feeling a little, I'm just feeling myself right now. I'm feeling uh, a little. Okay, yeah. Very full. All right, well, Brenda, thank you for this date. I'm just going to. I wonder if someone else was listening to us talk, how they're feeling right now. You know, sometimes I think about my neighbors walking by on the outside of the, this sizzler that we're in, and I wonder if they think I've completely lost my mind. Yeah, if, if like, the ser- our server heard us, right. would he think, like, they're going to make it as a couple, or would he think, what the hell is going on? Right. And I think we're going to make it. I think we're going to make it, Yeah, too. I think... I'm ready to leave my husband for you. I thought you already did. Yeah. I wouldn't have taken this date had I known that you were still with you. I told him I was taking a break, but I think I'm going to tell him it's done. Just after this one date? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to call him. I'm going to call him. I'm going to say, this other man stuffed me up Uh and filled me, and I'm done. Okay. All right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Sizzler's awesome. Like Sizzler's how, great. How come more people don't? There's no. There's not a lot of Sizzlers. Because people crap on it. Yeah, people crap on it. I don't get it's it. It's actually good. It's good. It's a good deal too. Yeah. You ever had the champion? No, but after hearing that, hearing about it, I really want to try. I hope it. they have that on the menu. 
Oh, okay. So it's not real. Okay. I believe it. <laughs> Sounds You're like convincing. Right? You really, you really commit. People say I'm a wild guy. You're top ten wild guys. More wild than Stevo, I reckon. Mm, I don't know, dude. Yeah, no, I take it back. But, yeah, good. But you're both wild. I thought it should have been you as the first female Jackass cast member. Rachel's great, but I thought you'd be a good first female Jackass. That would be members. an awkward thing. Uh, that that's how I come out as a female <laughs> is so I could book Jackass. <laughs> would Would you like your What's your dream role? SNL. Is that still a dream of yours? <sighs> Yes and no. It's it's like um it it's kind of hard because it's such a different show than what I have built up in my head from as a kid. Does that sure. make sense? And you learn about the insides and the politics and everything going on there and you don't love it quite as much as you do when you were a kid. Of so course. I think that I would still <clears throat> would love to do that, but I think that it's just shifting a little bit with, I would prefer to have my own sketch show at this point. Okay, so number one, having your own sketch show would be your number one goal. Now, would you be willing to become a woman for that goal? Like actually start identifying as a woman? You wouldn't have to get um, your penis removed, but you would have to identify as a woman and you would have to take hormone pills. Yeah, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do it? Not worth no, it? No, it's not worth it to me. I'll, I'll get there. I, dude, everything that I do, it's the hard way. It just, it just, I, I go I either backdoor it or I, it, I go the long way around. But what if after the show's done filming, you could stop taking the pills and identify as a man again? Would you do it for like a year? No, because show? that would like <laughs> the people in that community. It'd be so upsetting for for people to be like, uh, they'd like be accepting. happy you tried it. I don't think so. You spread awareness. Mm. You're not insulting it. You, you're like, hey, I identify as a woman for the year. And then you're like, I changed my mind. Can you do that? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of people who regret changing genders. And then they go back? Mm -hmm. Really? They're, yeah, it's a common thing. Or they kill themselves. It's a high suicide rate amongst people who change genders. Really? Yeah. It's sad. A lot of people, they're like, I feel like I'm a woman or I feel like I'm a man. And they switch. They get the whole gender surgery. Every, they go through all the steps. And then they realize fuck that's not what i wanted to do and then they're incredibly depressed and they kill themselves not all of them but it's a high percentage it's very sad interesting this not, shit got real this. yeah yeah not, well it's because well what can happen i guess is if that's if something is bugging you and what if that wasn't the thing do you know yeah, what i mean it could be that because then you do all the things and then you're still not happy mm -hmm. then yeah so yeah you get yeah you just got to be sure you know one of the saddest comedians i know i don't want to say his name but he always really wanted to make it in comedy and then he made it he all his dreams came true he's a star selling out theaters doing living the dream and he's the saddest he's ever been and it's because he realized oh that that didn't make me happy either so what will like now i don't know what would make me happy oh so it's like one of those things where it's like you before you change genders before you change before you you change genders you got to figure out how to be happy with the gender that you are and then change genders mm. but if you're changing genders just to give yourself happiness that's a big risk it's a big risk because yeah, yeah, it yeah. might still not make you happy it might you might feel like you're the gender you're supposed to be but that's not gonna, that doesn't make you happy yeah well yeah, just self care in general mm -hmm. is important before you make any big life decisions. That's yeah. important. Yeah, I mm -hmm. think. Get a pair of white sneakers. Take a bath. Dude. If you're out there and you're not the gender you want to be, first, before changing genders, wear a brand new pair of white sneakers. Do you, are you a bath bomb guy? I typically, I like bath bombs, but I don't always have them available. I'm not always prepared. Normally, is it when I you don't identify as a woman, <laughs> <laughs> when I'm in a bath, I'm a woman. When I take baths, I identify as woman. Let's go, girls. Normally, I take baths on the road. Is when I do my baths because there my, are a lot of baths in hotels. Yeah, and yep. my bathtub at home's not the cleanest or nicest bathtub. So I'll be on the road and I'll be like, and you have a lot of free time too. You're in your hotel room all day. True. So I'm like, I'm taking more a bath. time to take a bath. Yeah. So I take a bath yeah. and I just use their soap. 
dude yeah i did did this one bath on the road one time because like it was one of those where the bath was like in the room next to the bed oh nice it was like one of those random yeah. hotels and i was like oh i'm treating myself i poured all the soap in the 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 bathtub and it had like jets in it and stuff like that oh this is a nice room it was you a got nice here. Room. i don't remember where yeah, it was I where, know I was where staying. it is vegas maybe probably something like that yeah yeah, yeah. and uh i had a Lacroix and i drank it while i was in the tub and i felt like the richest man on earth <laughs> it's so <laughs> so rich dude and it was like you know a 50 cent can of or 75 cent can of Lacroix. because here's the thing if you make $25,000 a year, that's like the poverty level if you're like a minimum wage employee, mm-hmm. or you make a million dollars a year, both those people would enjoy a bubble bath on LaCroix yeah. a lot. It's still one of the best things you could do, Yeah, no matter what your net worth is. True. So that's pretty cool to think about. Right. It's like in 2022, you don't need to be rich. You could have a little apartment mm-hmm. and you could still have a big screen TV with access to good sound any movie in the world you can Mm -hmm. still get delicious food delivered on an app to your phone like life isn't that much different when you're rich yeah you have a nicer car you travel more you have a bigger house you don't need that that's what i think about sometimes for the people who are like like middle well-known famous to like mega famous i'm like isn't it kind of better to be sort of like middle famous in a lot of ways yeah you don't have to get recognized on the street everywhere you could be a normal yeah. person yeah you're yeah you're not also i think when you're really rich everyone tries to take advantage of you and like use you yeah in some ways like they can't even help it. it's not even that people are bad but even me like when i'm around a rich famous person in my head, I'm like, oh, I hope they like throw me a bone. I think I can't help but think that. Mm-hmm. And I'm not like out there trying to network. I'm not a networking yeah. guy, but it's like when I'm, a, if I'm in the presence of, of our Lord and Savior, Joe Rogan, I can't help but think like he could snap his fingers and change my life. I can't help but have that thought in the back of my head. Sure. I can't help but think, oh man, I'd love to do his podcast. It's so huge. Like think about what that would do for me. And I'm not even like, trying to use people i'm not even like that but you can't help it the thoughts pop in your head because it's just it's just in front of you and and also you've seen it around you probably you've seen people who have changed their whole lives from going on that podcast yeah so it's better so all i'm saying is he lives a great life don't get me wrong i'd trade for his life in a second i'd swap bodies with him i do a spell if i could cast a spell and be joe rogan listen man we get it you like joe rogan (laughs) all right but what i'm saying is i'd probably rather just be like yeah middle of the road is that a bad attitude no yeah i don't think so I'd rather rather be a uh, like I'm trying to think what comedian I'd really like to be. Maybe like uh, I don't even know Eric Griffin. Maybe that level of of status. Oh, that's good. That level of him. He's got a great life. Oh yeah. He's got a hot wife. Yeah. Gets spots at the comedy store all the time. Yeah. Goes on the road when he wants. Goes Does on the road when he, wants. when he wants. Yeah. Gets cast and shit. Yeah. Has a podcast. He's doing it. He's living it. But. It probably still gets recognized enough to like inflate his ego and make him feel good, mm-hmm. but not recognized enough to where he like can't go places. Yeah, hear that, Eric Griffin? Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> Ari wants to be you. I want to be Eric Griffin. Up. I want to be Eric Griffin when I grow up. Who would you, who would you swap bodies with? What comedian? Whoa. Yeah. Oh, I thought of a better one than Eric Griffin. Mark Norman. I'd rather be. I'd be Mark Norman. He's doing theaters. He's got a six pack. Oh yeah, I'd swap bodies with him. He's just, a cool. He's a he's chill too. You just he's more chill than Eric. You just backed out from Eric Griffin. Yeah, I like Eric. He's nice, but Mark Norman's chiller. <laughs> Sorry, continue. Who would you do it with? The it's audience. Sa- wants it's Sandler. To know. Oh, he's yeah, Sandler. He, in my opinion, is if you. He's I a king. If you are going to have to be a megastar, not that like. I don't know if any of us are wanting to be like that famous where you get stopped. That dude gets stopped That's everywhere. That's the thing. He can't, he, he can't, can't go out. But what I like about mm-hmm. how he handles his fame, he will wear sweatpants on and baseball caps. He wears whatever he wants. He wears whatever he wants on late night shows. and everybody's Super just, hot wife. Yep. Nice guy. Super nice. And talk about somebody who 
figures out roles for his friends that and helps makes out movies with friends and, family. Yeah. and makes whole productions with people mm-hmm. who he wants to. And his trajectory as far as like career, sketch, excuse me, stand up, sketch, movies. Yeah. That to me, I'm like, dude, that guy's career is like, as far as like making things and doing stuff like that. Like I love what he's done. Also, other cool stats about him. Jewish, Republican. Really? Yeah, pretty cool. Wow. Pretty cool. There you go, dude. Yeah, well, he's a cool guy. He's made so much money. He doesn't want that messed with. That's probably it. Yeah. No, it's for sure yeah, yeah. a thousand yeah. percent the money thing. I think he has like a, probably a billion. I don't oh. even know. Probably a billion dollars. Probably dude. literally a billion no, dollars. No, no, Of course he has that. A billion? He has to. Wow. <laughs> anyway, this has been the uh, stroking off of comedian's egos section. <laughs> Hey, glad you want to be me. <laughs> Mark, I'm gay. Hey, me too. Perfect. All right. Thanks. <laughs> All right. Thanks for having me. Let's get into this final segment. Okay, we have another one. Sax talk. Oh, that's right. Okay, sax talk. Sax talk. All right. Welcome back to sax talk. Ari's going to share a story of a sexual encounter while I'm going to play some sweet, sweet sax along with him. And whenever you're ready, We'll do it up. All right. Well, this story here is a story that when it happened to me, I thought I would I would never share with anyone, not my family, not my friends, certainly not on a podcast for the world to listen to. But I'm now at the point in my life where I just don't care anymore about anything. And with that being said, this is a story about the time I went to the red light district in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. It was a rainy night. And I was in Amsterdam in the Netherlands, opening up for Theo Vaughn, the comedian. And I said, Hey, do you want to go window shopping? That's what they call it. It's where the whores are, the prostitutes in the red light district. And he said, Nah, man, I've already done that, but you should do it. And I was like, okay. And then still I was like, I don't want to do this alone. I don't want to go by myself and look at prostitutes. Like, that's weird. That's sad. I called my younger brother and I said, hey, I'm in Amsterdam. I was thinking about going to the red light district, but it's kind of weird. And he goes, listen, you might never be in Amsterdam again for the rest of your life. This is your only opportunity. You're single. You're in your 20s. You're there. Go do it. Go do it or you'll regret it forever. You got to do it. And I thought to myself, yeah, he's right. He's so right. So I left my hotel room and I walked through the rain and I went to the red light district. And even on this rainy night, there was a lot of women in these windows. There was a lot of tourists out there window shopping, as they called it. There was shrooms, there was weed, and there was hookers. I passed all the windows looking at these potential ladies of the night and i thought you know what this is like like my brother said this is a once in a lifetime opportunity i don't want to mess this up so i did a whole nother lap i did a lap two around the whole red light district and i was like she's the one that one right there on the first floor on the first street she's beautiful she's gorgeous she's a 10 that's a girl she's busty She's brunette. This is a girl I wouldn't be able to get in real life. This is a girl without without paying for her to do things to me. It would never happen. So I went in. I knocked on the window. She lets me in. And I said to her, hey, I'm new to this, but I really like, I really like you. And I'd like to see what services you offer. And she goes, do you want sex for 60 euro? And I said, yeah, yes, I do. And I didn't know how it worked. I said, do you give a blowjob as well? And she said, yes, yes, I do. And I said, okay, and do I need to wear a condom? And at this point, the whole tone in the room changed. And she no longer was interested in me. And she goes, of course you wear a condom. Of course. What kind of stupid question? Of course you wear a condom. And I said, okay, I'm so sorry. I didn't know. I've never done this before. I'm so sorry. I'll wear a condom. Of course I'll wear a condom. She hands me a condom and a little packet of lube. 
and I put on the condom and the lube, and I start making love to this woman. And she, it's missionary. We're, we're making love. Me and this Amsterdam prostitute are in her little miniature brothel on her bench, on her cushion bench. I'm just making love to this woman, and her bra is still on. And I reach down to grab her big busty breast. And in this moment, she pushes my hand away and she goes, that's 20 euros extra if you want my breast. That's 20 euros extra. And I said, okay, I'm so sorry. I, I don't need your breasts. And at this point, I, I lost the half erection that I was able to arouse in the beginning. And I said, thank you so much for your time. That was amazing. And I... I ended the sexual encounter and I left. And that was my uh, trip to Amsterdam. And then I did stand up the next night. It was awesome. Sold out theater. Dude. Oh my goodness. Yeah, how are you supposed to have any... I mean, if you're getting yelled at, she, made, made some people are into that i guess but <laughs> she did not like me and she did not even pretend to like me for money she was nope you suck i hate you and i was like okay this didn't do much for me yeah yeah and oddly enough that wasn't the worst sexual experience i've ever had but it was bad it was one of the worst top five top five top five worst sexual experiences i've ever had probably three or four what's in your top four there was a a bloody experience. There was a uh, experience where I thought we might have to go to the hospital. There's been a few. There's been a few <laughs> bad experiences, but oh, there's been some STD scares. Ooh, but that one, that one's a good one. That was lighthearted. Was it? It was a silly one. <laughs> It was, it was, you know, everyone, everyone knows about the red light district. In it was Amsterdam. like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you gave it to me. But you know what? In that one, I think I came across as a good guy and the prostitute came across as a bad guy. And I like being the good guy. I like you being the good guy too. Thank you. Yeah. I think our listeners like you being the good guy too. Yeah. I'm a good guy. I'm a nice guy. Yeah. Like you said at the very beginning of the podcast, we thought about editing something out, but you guys knew his intentions. And I've never been back since. I want you guys to know that too. If you're out there and you're thinking like, oh, what a scumbag, like you got to live and learn. And I got that out of my system. Right. Well, Ari, where can people find you on social media and all that stuff? Just my name, Ari Manis. I'm everywhere. I'm on all the social media platforms. I got a website. I'm around the country doing stand up. I'd love to see you out there on a show. Tell me about your prostitute stories. Comment below your prostitute story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> If you're still with us right now, <laughs> comment below your prostitute stories. And uh, you go on the road a lot with uh, with Theo lately. I open right? for Theo sometimes. I open for Mark Norman sometimes. I open up for Fahim Anwar sometimes, who's been on this show. I've opened up. I'm opening up for Amir K this weekend in Canada. I open up for a lot of people, and occasionally I go out on my own. But I'm mostly at the feature level right now. Awesome. Well, you're very funny, dude. Go check out Ari. Uh, watch his stand-up clips. They're great. Love you, pal. Thanks for doing the show. Thanks for having me. Love you, too.